Okay, so um, let us uh, continue with whatever we were doing. See, we were trying to understand what uh, removable singularity at infinity means, okay, and uh, uh, what we saw was that uh, a function, uh, if it is entire, that is, it is analytic on the whole complex plane, and it is also analytic at infinity, which by definition means it has a removable singularity at, at the point at infinity and of course that is equivalent to it being bounded at infinity or it that is which is also equivalent to it having a limit at infinity okay. Then such a function must reduce to a constant. So an, an entire function which is analytic at infinity has to be a constant. In other words a non-constant entire function at infinity cannot have a removable singularity it has to be either a pole or a essential singularity so it has to be a real singularity it cannot be a non-singularity which is what a removable singularity is. A removable singularity is actually a non-singularity in disguise okay. So it is a it is a fake singularity uh, a removable singularity is a fake singularity it is not a real singularity okay. So an entire function uh, which is not constant cannot have a fake singularity at infinity it has to have a either a pole or an essential singularity. Now uh, I told you that this is essentially the same as Liouville's theorem. I mean this is just another avatar of Liouville's theorem and uh, so, uh, so, so you know the, the, the point is that somehow uh, uh, there is a there is a generalization of Liouville's theorem okay which, uh, which is exactly you know uh, which is exactly like the casuarity weierstrass theorem okay. See uh, so we, that is something that I want to say in this connection. See the let me recall what is the uh, big Picard theorem. The big Picard theorem is given a function analytic function uh, which has an isolated essential singularity at a point then in every neighborhood of that isolated essential singularity the function takes all complex values uh, except uh, with, the, uh, with the exception of one value at most one value okay which means it might fail to take one value at the most or it might take all values okay and this it will do in every neighborhood of an essential singularity and every value will be taken uh, every value that it takes will be taken infinitely many times. This is the big Picard theorem okay or the great Picard theorem and what is the first approximation to the big Picard theorem. So the big Picard theorem said theoretically what it says is that if you take the image of a deleted neighborhood of an essential singularity you get either the whole complex plane or you get the complex plane minus a point. So it is either the whole plane or a punctured plane. The puncture being uh, corresponding to removing a, a value which we, it will not take okay. Now uh, what is the casuarity weierstrass theorem? The casuarity weierstrass theorem is a weaker version okay which we actually proved using Riemann's uh, removable singularities theorem okay. And what is the weaker version? The weaker version is that the image is dense you take any neighborhood deleted neighborhood of an isolated essential singularity and take its image under the analytic function. The image is a set which is dense in the plane which means the closure of the image is the whole plane. The other way of saying that is that every complex value uh, the, the function values come close to every complex value. In other words you give me any complex value I can find a sequence of points such that the function values tend to that complex value okay. The, so uh, that is the same as saying that the image is dense that the image the closure of the image contains all the points in the complex plane which is the same as saying that every complex value can be approached by values of the function as close as you want okay. So, so this is the casuarity weierstrass theorem which is relatively easy to prove because you can deduce it from the Riemann's removable singularity theorem that we did okay. Now in the same way there is a there is a similar version of this for entire functions okay. So uh, you know so so again uh, let us go back to the Liouville's theorem. What is Liouville's theorem? Liouville's theorem says that a bounded entire function is a constant okay and so if you say it in a different way uh, what it says is that uh, an entire function which is not constant is unbounded okay. What it means is that it will take values with bigger and bigger modulus because if all the values that it takes are 
bounded by a certain modulus that means it is a bounded function and if it is entire and bounded Liouville will say it is a constant. So if you take a non-constant entire function what it will tell you is that the values of the function can become arbitrarily large in modulus okay. Now but then you can ask the question what is the image of an entire function and the answer to that is the little picard theorem. Uh, the little picard theorem says that the image actually the image of an entire function is either the whole complex plane okay or it is a punctured plane namely it will omit one point at the most and that is uh, that is the case for example if you take e power z it will omit the value 0. So uh, and I told you that the, this is called the little picard theorem or the small picard theorem and this is supposed to be we, we would like to derive it as a corollary of the big picard theorem okay. But then the big picard theorem has a weaker version which is the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem and similarly the uh, little picard theorem also has a weaker version okay and that weaker version is the Liouville uh, generalized Liouville theorem and what is the generalized Liouville theorem? Generalized Liouville theorem says that you take the image of, of an entire function then the image is dense okay that is the uh, that is the weak version of the little picard theorem which is called the generalized Liouville theorem okay and so um, uh, the reason why I am trying to bring it uh, at this point in the in our discussion is because it is to just to tell you that this is a circle of ideas with, with the, 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 uh, the generalized Liouville theorem uh, is to the little picard theorem what the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem is to the big picard theorem okay it is it is a similar thing. Uh, both the Picard theorem tells tell you what exactly the image will be okay that the image will be the whole plane or the plane minus a point and the, the both the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem and the generalized Liouville theorem will tell you that the image is the image is dense that is the point okay and how do you prove the uh, how do you prove the uh, uh, generalized Liouville theorem it is also it is actually the same uh, proof as uh, the same uh, tactics that we use to prove the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem except that you use Liouville's theorem okay. So, so let me let, let me write that down uh, uh, so, uh, so here is the generalized Liouville's theorem theorem uh, uh, the, the image of an entire function is dense in the complex plane and of course uh, it is very very important that all these theorems are, uh, are, are valid only for non-constant functions okay. So whenever you should not miss saying they are it is a non-constant entire function because a constant function always the image is single point and it is entire okay so you should the, uh, this non constant should always be carried through if you want your statements to be accurate okay you you might you you might tend to miss it but if you miss it it's a big miss okay so let me write that the the image of a uh, 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 well uh, non constant so this is very important the image of a non, uh, non constant entire function is is dense in c it, it ends in the complex plane what does it mean you can let us say it in two different ways it means that any complex value can be approached by function values that is one way and that if you want uh, to uh, say it more clearly you can say you can find a sequence of points such as the function values at those points approach the given value okay. So let me write that uh, in other words in other words uh, given uh, w not in the complex plane uh, there exists uh, a, a sequence is a den in uh, is there is a sequence in the complex plane such that uh, the f of f of z n this sequence the, the image of the sequence under f this tends to w not uh, where uh, f is the uh, given non constant entire function okay so this is another way of saying uh, what i said 
Now, so this is a generalized level Lewis theorem, and this is uh, so. Let me write it. This is the analog of uh, uh, the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem. Okay, uh, this is the so I'll I'll write it as analog of the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem. Okay, and uh, uh, I am still putting this analog of Cassorati Weierstrass theorem uh, in uh, in quotes in some sense, uh, but uh, it is actually Cassorati Weierstrass theorem. But you know, the only thing is uh, 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 the case where it is actually a Cassorati Weierstrass theorem for infinity as an essential singularity uh, justifies this name actually, and I'll explain that to you later. Okay, but what I want you to at this point understand is that the statement of the generalized level theorem is similar to this statement of the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem, and these are both weaker versions of the stronger theorems. The stronger version of the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem is the Big Picard theorem, the stronger version of the Liouville generalized level theorem is the Little Picard theorem. Okay, that is the point. Now, let us try to prove it. The proof method is exactly the same as we have been doing for the Cassorati Weierstrass theorem. Uh, proof. Uh, uh, so you prove by contradiction. Okay, you assume that there is uh, a value which the function doesn't come close enough to, and then get get a get to prove that the function is a constant, and you're done. Okay. So so suppose uh, there exists a W naught uh, uh, which is is not. Uh, uh, which is not in uh, the closure of f of c, f of c is actually the image of f, the image of f is just all the set of values of f, okay. of course f is entire okay. and uh, of course let us assume f is entire non constant. Okay. Uh, suppose there is a point suppose there is a value w0 which is not in the closure that means uh, f you this this w0 cannot be uh, approached by function values okay that means there is a neighbors neighborhood surrounding w0 which is uh, which doesn't intersect the image okay uh, so the w0 is not in the closure of uh, the uh, of the image means W naught is outside the closure of the image, okay, and the closure of the image is a closed set, okay, and anything outside a closed set is in an open set, and anything which is in an open set is contained in a small disk, which is also in that open set. So I can find a small disk surrounding W naught which doesn't intersect the image, okay. So let me write that down. Uh, thus, uh, there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that. Uh, uh, m m uh, mod of f z minus w naught is greater than or equal to f z. Okay, I mean this is th this is a si this is the same as saying that the uh, the disk mod w minus w naught less than epsilon does not intersect uh, f of c. So this this disk does not intersect f of c means that its complement uh, 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 f of c can at most intersect its complement okay and uh, well um, but now you know what to do you see the again the trick is that you know f uh, f of z is analytic uh, everywhere it is entire so f of z minus w naught is also analytic it is also entire okay because it is just the constant minus w naught added to an entire function and you know sum of analytic functions is analytic a constant function is analytic therefore f minus w naught becomes a entire function but it never vanishes it is always greater than or equal to epsilon. So it means that it is reciprocal which is defined because it does not vanish mind you the moment an analytic function does not vanish its reciprocal is defined and that also turns to out to be analytic. So 1 by f z minus w naught also turns out to be analytic okay. Uh, uh, and uh, because 
the denominator which is fz minus w naught does not vanish and that is because it is always greater than or equal to epsilon in modulus okay and epsilon is a positive quantity right. So I get uh, this function 1 by fz minus w naught which is on the one hand analytic and on the whole plane plus I also get that its modulus is bounded by 1 by epsilon. So it is an entire bounded function and Liouville's theorem will tell you that it is a constant okay and so 1 by fz minus w naught will become a constant that constant cannot be 0 okay because if that constant is 0 your 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 your, your fz minus w naught cannot be a finite quantity okay. So uh, the constant is non zero and once it is non zero the reciprocal of that constant will become fz minus w naught so it will tell you fz minus w naught is a constant so f itself will be a constant and that will contradict uh, if if you with, uh, with, uh, with the assumption that f is non constant okay and that that ends the proof and if you really see this is exactly the same proof as uh, the same technique of proof as we proved the you know casualty wire stress theory okay. So let me write this down. Uh, mm, uh, now uh, uh, fz minus w naught uh, is anal is entire and non vanishing so uh, 1 by fz minus w naught is also entire and non vanishing but has modulus bounded by 1 by epsilon so con so is constant by Liouville's theorem And of course the fact that uh, 1 by f minus w naught does not vanish will tell you that this constant cannot be 0 okay because after all uh, this uh, this constant is the value is the function itself okay. So uh, this constant this constant is non 0 because uh, 1 by fz minus w naught is equal to that constant and 1 by fz minus w naught never vanishes and so f becomes constant and that is the end of the proof. So I am not so uh, the way you should read this proof is that either you assume f is a constant and get to the end of this proof which will say that you have got a contradiction or you assume that f is a function an entire function which uh, misses a value uh, I mean which, which is which stays away from a value then it has to reduce to a constant that is what this proof says okay. So this is the generalized Liouville theorem okay and uh, I just wanted to say that this is an uh, this draws an analogy with the casualty wave stress theorem okay fine. Now uh, uh, you see so what we have now at the moment we have we have at the moment uh, uh, the idea of a function having a removable singularity at infinity okay. And then of course you know you can ask uh, um, uh, all uh, you can ask regular questions that you would ask usual questions that you can ask for a function which is analytic at, it, at a point okay. So, uh, so for example um, so to begin with suppose you have a function which is analytic at a point in the complex plane the in the usual complex plane then what do you know about what, what are all the things that uh, what are the basic things that you know about such a function. So the first thing is that you know that it is infinitely differentiable. Okay. In fact, all its derivatives exist, and they are also analytic uh, at that point. Okay, this is one thing. Then the second thing is you have Cauchy's theorem that you take a neighborhood, sufficiently small neighborhood of the point. In fact, you take a uh, you take any uh, disk surrounding that point, or even a domain surrounding that point, containing that point where the function is analytic, and the integral over of the function over a simple closed curve. Uh, such that the function is analytic on the curve and in the interior of the curve also will always be 0 that is Cauchy's theorem essentially and then of course you have that the function it can be expanded as a Taylor series this is Taylor's theorem okay and uh, you have a converse criterion for analyticity which is given by Morera's theorem which says that uh, uh, if you have a continuous function 
and if the integral over every simple closed curve is 0 then the function is analytic okay. So these are all the things that you know about analytic functions in uh, this is this is this is all this is all you know for a function uh, analytic uh, in a domain in the complex plane but now we are interested in analytic analysis analyticity at infinity okay. So you can ask uh, all these questions of a function which is ana which is analytic at infinity okay you, you should see what happens. So the first thing is uh, there is there is one point we are you have to be very careful about see you cannot define the derivative of the function at infinity it is a uh, it is troublesome because you know I cannot really write limit z tends to infinity f of z minus f of infinity by z minus infinity which it really does not make any sense okay but there is a tricky way of doing it see the tricky way is well you know how we defined uh, a function to be analytic at infinity we cleverly said that it has to have a removable singularity at infinity and for having it making it have a removable singularity at infinity uh, we found that either you say it is bounded at infinity or we it has a limit at infinity or it is continuous at infinity you just put one of these weak conditions okay and all that all these three are good enough and they are they are powerful enough is because the, the inspiration comes from the Riemann's removable singularity theorem. So you can ask this question suppose a function f is analytic at infinity then uh, are all its derivatives also analytic at infinity okay. So uh, and the answer is yes the answer is uh, the answer is yes. So it is it is funny you are saying that uh, the function is analytic at infinity all the derivatives are analytic at infinity but you really do not go and define the derivative at infinity in fact the truth is that the derivative at infinity will always be 0 okay uh, except uh, uh, at the worst it can be a constant okay uh, uh, I mean at the best I mean it can be a constant all the time most of the time it is 0 okay. So, uh, so you know uh, uh, so let me let so let me first answer that question uh, so so remarks uh, 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 number 1 if uh, f of z uh, is analytic at infinity then so is every derivative of f okay. So if f is analytic at infinity then all its derivatives are also analytic at infinity that is the that is the first that is the first statement okay and um, uh, uh, and and the 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 truth is that uh, uh, the uh, the moment you say something is analytic at infinity its value at infinity has to be defined and the fact is that all the derivatives vanish okay. Uh, in fact uh, in fact uh, in fact uh, all derivatives of f at infinity vanish. except possibly f itself not vanishing at infinity it may be a constant and f is thought if you want to think of f, f as the 0th derivative of itself okay then the 0th derivative can at worst be uh, can be a constant which is non zero but all other derivatives have to be zero okay. So so why is this true so the, this is true because of well uh, basically the, the many ways to see it the easiest way to see it is by, by, uh, by looking at the uh, by looking at this philosophy that if a function is uh, uh, I mean the, the, the behavior of a function at infinity uh, f of w at infinity is the same as the behavior of g of z which is f of 1 by uh, uh, z at 0 okay. So uh, if you use that you will see that uh, the uh, uh, you then you use the theorem that uh, for a point in the complex plane if a function is analytic at a point in the complex plane then it is infinitely differentiable there all the derivatives are also analytic at that point okay and that gives you uh, this result okay. So, so let me so let me explain that uh, uh, so proof is uh, uh, f uh, w uh, so I, I, I will change z to w uh, f w is analytic uh, at infinity if and only if g of z is equal to f of 1 by w 1 by z is analytic at 0 at 0 okay and the point is that uh, you know uh, 
see, uh, so g of z uh, is analytic at 0, so g is given by a Taylor expansion, ok. So, uh, uh, g has uh, a Taylor uh, expansion at, at the origin, uh, so it, this is the, it is otherwise called the Maclaurin expansion. The Maclaurin expansion is the actually the Taylor expansion at the origin at 0 ok. Uh, and what is the Taylor expansion? It is just g of z is equal to uh, this is f of 1 by z and that is uh, sigma uh, n equal to 0 to infinity a n uh, z power n. This is what the Taylor expansion is and you know that the a n's are the derivatives. Uh, the a n's are the derivatives of uh, 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 well <coughs> you know a n a n is just uh, 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 the nth derivative or, or the nth derivative of g divided by uh, factorial n, the nth derivative of g at 0 divided by factorial n, this is what the a n's are ok. So, you know that ok and this g upper n uh, let me put a bracket, the bracket is supposed to mean derivative g round bracket upper round bracket n so, ok. Um, now, you see, uh, uh, now see the the point is that this is where is this valid? This is valid in uh, valid in uh, 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 mod z less than r, okay? Where r is the radius of convergence, radius of r is the radius of convergence of this power series in z, okay? Uh, you know, whenever a power series converges, it converges in a disk. Uh, with center the center of the power series and the radius uh, is called the radius of convergence ok and this radius of convergence is actually the distance from the center of the uh, of the series to the nearest singularity of the function that is what the radius of convergence is. For example, if the function has no singularities then the radius of convergence is infinite that is what happens when you write out a Taylor series for our entire function ok. The, the fact that uh, you write out a Taylor series when you get infinite radius of convergence is uh, a proof, it is equivalent to saying that you have the function that you are really dealing with is actually a, an entire function ok. Uh, so, uh, so you have this, now you know let us put w equal to 1 by z and you will get a similar expansion for f of w in a neighbourhood of infinity. So, uh, so, so what you will get is you will get f of w equal to sigma well uh, n equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, a n w to the minus n uh, uh, valid in uh, mod z uh, mod w uh, greater than 1 by r ok. This is what you will get because I, I'll, I just put z equal to 1 by w that is the relationship between z and w ok and if I put that I will get mod w greater than 1 by r. And you know you easily recognize that mod w greater than 1 by r is a is a neighborhood of infinity ok uh, in the extended complex plane all right. And there you have this function and uh, this is kind of uh, this is very nice for f because you see uh, when you write an exp uh, uh, I told you that this is how you should treat this as an expansion for a function at infinity ok which is good. See uh, if you want to expand a function at infinity you use the powers of the variable just as you will uh, when you want to expand it at 0. But the only thing is that at infinity it is the negative powers that behave well ok, at 0 it is the positive powers that behave well ok. So, you see that this expression has only negative powers of w, it does not have any positive power of w and that is the proof that it behaves well at infinity because you know if I, uh, if I let uh, w tend to infinity then this expression is every term in this expression is going to go to 0 and this and it is going to go to 0 uniformly because you know whenever uh, these things converge, uh, whenever series converge uh, 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 they, they always converge whenever power series converge or Lorentz series converge they always converge normally they converge uh, uniformly on compact sets ok. Therefore, see the, the fact is that uh, 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 this is this is very well behaved ok. The moment you see only negative powers of the variable in a, in a series you must really understand that you are looking at a function which is entire I mean which is actually analytic at infinity ok. So, for example, the simplest case is uh, if you know if you are looking at 1 by z 
okay, which is the same as 1 by w if you want, if you think, take a, think of w as a variable. 1 by w is good at infinity, it is bad at 0, okay, it has a pole at 0, whereas at infinity it is very good. Similarly, if you take 1 by uh, w squared, that is bad at 0, but it is good at infinity. All the negative powers are good at infinity. So, the fact that your f has an expansion in a series of negative powers of w tells you that it is good at infinity okay and the, the fact I want to say is that if you uh, 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 well um, you know now you know if you if you take this if you take this expansion for f okay and uh, you differentiate you can differentiate this, exp this expression for f uh, uh, this series for f of w term by term that is because of normal convergence okay and if you do that what you will get is again uh, uh, expressions of the same type okay because when you differentiate uh, of course you know when I put n equal to 0 I will get a naught and what is a naught? a naught is the value at the center see if you write a if you write a series power series centered at z naught okay and you plug in z equal to z naught what will you get? you are supposed to get uh, the constant okay if you if you write out a power series in z minus z naught it will be of the form a naught a naught plus a1 times z minus z naught plus a2 times z minus z naught squared and so on when i plug in z equal to z naught which is the center of the series all the terms except the first vanish and i get the constant term so the constant term is the function value at z naught at the center okay and in the same way if you look at this expression expression for f of w at uh, at infinity in a neighborhood of infinity you see a naught is what you get when you plug in w equal to infinity okay you plug in w equal to infinity which means you take the limit as w tends to infinity what happens is only a naught survives and this is in this is in perfect analogy that when you as you go to the center of the uh, of the expansion what you get is a constant term okay and so in some, in some sense what I want you to understand is that this, uh, this expansion in negative powers of z is like uh, the good expansion that is the, re that's the reason why it is called analytic part at infinity okay. Uh, all the negative powers along with the constant they form the analytic part at infinity and the positive powers of the variable they form the singular part at infinity okay. This is exactly upside down for uh, what happens at a finite uh, complex number okay. So, well, uh, now what I want to tell you is that this f can be differentiated okay you can differentiate f and uh, if you look at all those derivatives the derivatives uh, the moment the moment you differentiate it even once the constant will go away okay and then you further differentiate it uh, the constant is not going to remain the even the first derivative the constant will go away and you mind you when you when you and you can do the differentiation term by term okay if you do it term by term you are only differentiating negative powers of z uh, of the of w and if you differentiate negative powers of w you will get further negative powers of w you are not going to end up with the positive power. So, the moral of the story is that you can keep on differentiating this as many times as you want and you are going to get a, a functions which are analytic at infinity because you are going to get analytic functions uh, in a neighborhood of infinity and they will all go to 0 at infinity because they involve only negative powers therefore you see that all derivatives exist and they are all 0 and that is the that is the remark okay. So, uh, I am just using the fact I am just using the simple fact that you know whenever a functional series converges normally that is it converges uniformly on compact subsets of a domain and if you know that every uh, term in the series is analytic then the series converges to an analytic function and the derivatives can be computed by doing term wise differentiation that is all I am using okay. So, that is the first remark. So, uh, so you know it is very very funny you must understand that we do not define what derivative at infinity is okay. But uh, we indirectly define a function being analytic at infinity as being continuous at infinity or being bounded at infinity or having a limit at infinity and then we get that all the derivatives also are analytic at infinity and we get in fact also that all the derivatives are 0 okay. So, you see you see it is very very funny you are not able to define derivative at infinity okay but for the derivatives at infinity you are getting a, an expression they are all 0 okay. So, uh, well 
uh, then let us go to the uh, let us go to the second remark ok. So, so let me so, so, in, so in this in this in this regard let me actually tell you that um, in some sense uh, Cauchy's theorem uh, fails ok, Cauchy's theorem will fail for uh, functional analytic at infinity ok and uh, the, 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 the idea is very simple you see take the function f of w equal to 1 by w ok, 1 by w is one of is the best uh, uh, I mean uh, all negative powers of w are the best functions at infinity ok. Now if I integrate 1 by w over over a curve which contains 0 then I am certainly not going to get uh, 0 because 0 is a pole but 1 by w is analytic at infinity ok. So Cauchy's theorem will fail. So the moral of the story is that uh, you, you have to be careful when you try to apply integration theorems uh, when you when you want to work with the point at infinity you have to be a little careful ok. So, so let me write this here uh, Cauchy's theorem fails which is in a way uh, uh, sad because uh, but then you cannot uh, you, you should see this as inevitable because you cannot define the derivative at infinity ok uh, 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 directly right so so what is the example the example is you take uh, f of w equal to 1 by w you take this function in you take uh, uh, you take the extended complex plane c union infinity okay mind you it is also analytic at infinity its value at infinity is 0 that is you make it continuous at infinity by putting f of infinity equal to 0 okay and it is defined in uh, the punctured extended plane okay which is the exterior you throw out 0 but you include infinity ok. This is a uh, this is mind you this is an open set in the extended complex plane given the uh, you know one point compactification topology ok as we have seen earlier. Now you take this function now it is not true that uh, integral over every closed curve is 0 ok. So uh, well um, so you know uh, see take take uh, uh, take uh, mod w equal to 1 ok you take mod w equal to 1 for that matter this is the unit circle ok and see the the uh, what is Cauchy's theorem the usual Cauchy's theorem is uh, you take a function uh, which is analytic on and within a simple closed contour ok and uh, you integrate over the contour you should get 0 ok. Now the point is that if you take mod w equal to 1 if I if you give me the uh, if you give me the positive orientation if you give me the positive orientation then the interior of the unit circle will be the uh, interior of the curve as usual and the exterior of the unit circle which is the neighborhood of infinity will be the exterior of the curve ok. So, uh, uh, and if you give it the positive orientation ok then is the function analytic uh, in the interior no because if you give mod w equal to 1 the positive orientation then the interior is the interior of the unit circle which is mod w less than 1 it contains w equal to 0 where it is not analytic. So, you should not give it the positive orientation if you want it to be analytic. So, what you do is you take mod w equal to 1 but put the negative orientation ok that is a curve for which the interior of the curve which will be the exterior of the unit disc will be a domain where the function is analytic but still if you calculate the integral over that I am going to get minus 2 pi i and that is not 0 so Cauchy's theorem fails ok. So, uh, so let me write this down take mod w equal to 1 give it uh, the negative orientation orientation so that uh, its interior uh, lies in uh, uh, c union infinity minus 0 uh, its interior is actually Uh, 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 yeah, mod is given by mod uh, mod w greater than one. Uh, this set along with the point at infinity. 
this is the interior okay it is a kind of it is actually the exterior because if you change the orientation you know the interior and exterior will get uh, interchanged and again now at this point let me recall from uh, first course in complex analysis what is this interior and exterior. So the, the rule is the following you say the interior of the region uh, is actually the region that lies to your left as you walk along the curve okay so that is the rule. So you know if I take the unit circle and if I walk along uh, and give it the positive orientation and if I walk ar along it which means I am going to walk in the anti-clockwise sense then what lies to the left is the in inside of the unit circle okay which is the interior okay and if I give it the clockwise orientation which means I am going to walk clockwise around it then the interior what lies to my left will be the exterior of the unit circle and that is the reason uh, 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 what, uh, what, li what lies towards the left will be the interior and that will be the exterior of the unit circle okay it will be so uh, so let me again say say this uh, just to relieve you of some confusion the xt the interior of mod w equal to 1 uh, with the clockwise orientation is the exterior of the unit circle okay because it lies to the left okay so um, fine so now but so now you know if you take uh, but integral over mod w equal to 1 uh, uh, f w d w is going to be minus 2 pi l okay. Mind you I am getting this minus because this mod w equal to 1 is given the clockwise orientation you know you have done this computation with anti clockwise orientation uh, in a first course in complex analysis and you always get 2 pi i but since I have changed the orientation to uh, you know clockwise I will get a minus sign because you know after all if you change the if you change the orientation of the path of the integra integration then the integral will change by a minus sign you know that okay. So the, the point is the Cauchy's theorem fails okay so you should not expect anything out of Cauchy's theorem here okay. So, so for a function which is analytic at infinity Cauchy's theorem fails uh, the, 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 then the next thing I want to talk about is about Morera's theorem okay. So, uh, thankfully Morera's theorem works and uh, Morera's theorem works just for the case uh, just because of the fact that Riemann's removable singularity theorem works and, and basically Morera's theorem works because we cheated by saying that analytic at infinity is the same as continuity at infinity okay. So, uh, so let me so let me say that uh, Morera's theorem Morera's theorem works so uh, so what is this so you know uh, uh, so let me recall uh, what is the usual Morera's theorem for a domain in the complex plane mind you Morera's theorem is supposed to be a, it is a, supposed to be a converse to Cauchy's theorem okay. Now the only beauty about Morera's theorem is that where, whereas in Cauchy's theorem you always try to apply it to a simply connected domain okay you do not allow any holes and that is because Cauchy's theorem says integral over a curve is 0 provided the function is also analytic inside the curve okay there should be no point inside the curve where the function has a singularity or is not analytic so there should be no holes in the domain of analyticity with inside that curve okay whereas Morera's theorem is valid even for non simply connected domains that is the beauty of Morera's theorem it is slightly stronger in that sense but it is a uh, uh, it is a converse to Cauchy's theorem. So what is Morera's theorem for a domain in the complex plane it is just that suppose I know I have I have a f continuous function on a domain in the complex plane and suppose I know the integral over every simple closed curve is 0 then the function is analytic okay and the, the proof actually uh, for is very very easy what it does the proof is actually that because the integral is 0 okay you can fix a point and then you can define uh, an antiderivative the antiderivative will be independent of the path it's, it can be defined as an integral the integral is independent of the path because the hypothesis of Morera's theorem is that the integral over any closed curve is 0 the integral over any closed curve is 0 mind you is equivalent to integral being independent of the path okay and therefore you can define an antiderivative and this antiderivative will be a function whose derivative is the given function okay but the moment the fact that the antiderivative has the derivative as the given function tells you that the antiderivative is analytic and you then use the theorem that the derivative of an analytic function is analytic therefore the original function which you assume to be continuous is also analytic. So this is how Morera's theorem works 
okay. Now you will have to modify this, uh, this more or less works also uh, for the uh, for a domain in the extended complex plane, okay. So uh, suppose uh, uh, you are in the extended, you are, you are, you have a domain in the extended complex plane and suppose uh, integral over any closed curve is 0 and suppose your function is continuous, okay. Then you forget the point at infinity, what for whatever is left Moriarty's theorem still works and tells you that the function is analytic. So infinity is becomes a singular point but then it is continuous at infinity and we have cheated by saying that continuity at infinity is as good as analyticity at infinity so it becomes continuous everywhere uh, I mean it becomes analytic everywhere and you are done okay. So Moriarty's theorem works for a domain in the uh, extended complex plane also so it works at infinity Moriarty's theorem works at infinity okay. So only thing you should be careful is ab uh, about is that you should not try to integrate over a curve which passes through infinity which does not make sense okay. Uh, by a curve we always mean a curve in the finite complex plane okay not involving the point at infinity okay. So I uh, will write this down in more detail in the next talk.